Good evening. My name is Martijn Tepas. I'm uh, one of the programmers of the festival. And I'm really happy and proud to uh, present to you Audrey Estonis, filmmaker from Lithuania, and Pamela Kohn, who will moderate it. She is a curator, writer, um, jack of all trades, programmer, uh, done a lot and doing a lot for ITFA as well. Um, Audrius has been uh, a regular guest from ITFA, and I'm really happy about that. He's a very distinctive filmmaker with a wonderful poetic style. Uh, he was here two years ago with Woman at the Glacier, but he was here before with Uku Kai and Earth of the Blind. And I think I miss a few titles here even. Uh, he, you will find out soon. Um, he's also here with a wonderful film that I recommend you to see, Bridges of Time. That's um, screening still tomorrow and uh, the day after. So check out, of course, your program guide. Um, I won't say too much about that because I think that will be uh, part of the program here. But for now, please give them a huge hand and enjoy Adria Stonis. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, welcome. And uh, we'll be talking for about an hour um, with Audrius, and um, we have lots of wonderful clips to show, um, including a couple of clips from Bridges of Time, the new uh, feature film that we'll be playing here. So let's jump right in. Um, usually I like to start these talks by, as I'm doing my research and, and sort of, you know, thinking of, of, of ways to talk about your work, um, which is, you know, you're very prolific and very diverse in your approach. Um, but a friend that I met here sent me something about Farabik, and Farabik is also playing at IDFA. It was one of Helena Tuchishkova's top 10 selections. And James Agee, an American film critic and novelist and essayist, wrote something about Georges Rouquier's work that resonated so much with me in terms of looking at your work. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to read it. Um, he writes, he says, he, meaning the director, realizes that scrupulously handled, the camera can do what nothing else in the world can do, can record unaltered reality, and can be made also to perceive, record, and communicate in full unaltered power the peculiar kinds of poetic vitality which blaze in every real thing and real person, and which are in great degree, inevitably and properly, last to every other kind of artist except the cam lost to every kind of artist except the camera artist. He goes on to say, there is not an invented person or thing in the picture, and the reenactments and invented incidents are perfect examples of the discipline of imagination necessary under these difficult circumstances. And I feel, in a sense, we can look at your films on an epic scale, certainly, but it's in the intimate details where what I perceive as this disciplined imagination happens. Um, let's start, first of all, and talk about why you are so devoted to the, to the documentary form and using documentary tools to storytell. Uh. It could be a very complicated answer to, to, to this question, or it could be a very simple. Uh, the, the, the more Actually, I discovered this uh, quite a long time ago, that, uh, that there are so many uh, amazing stories around, and um, there's so much beauty around, that you actually don't need to invent anything. And you don't need to take from from your. I mean, you don't need to imagine something, because you you just go there and you just um, record and you collect all these stories. And this is this is uh, absolutely magical. And also, what I really discovered that mm, there are things that you can cannot. I don't even. Imp see the imagination that could create the, that kind of situations, or characters, or images. And sometimes uh, you meet uh, the, the 
the person and then you think what kind of actor could play this what mm -hmm. kind of what how can, can you what kind of how can you play something that it's absolutely impossible to play it's it's not only in acting it's in um, in the wrinkles in the eyes in the way that somebody walks and 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 talks it's uh, it's such a complexity of of the reality that couldn't be recreated or couldn't be invented or or, or fictionalized this is some this this is such a beauty that you only can go with the camera and film mm -hmm. in terms of what tends to captivate you i mean you've you've worked in short form for for most of your career yeah um in in terms of that that space, that limited space, and, and filling, creating a whole world, whether it's a protagonist, whether it's a landscape, whether it's a protagonist in a landscape, a journey film. I mean, there's different entry points always to how you explicate an existence. Um, and, and a lot of times, um, your, your filmic language, your visual language, takes the place of exposition almost always. I mean, there are very, we're gonna show one scene where there's a lot of explication, but it's also sort of detached in a sense. And you leave it up to your viewer, to the spectator, to make the connections. Um, what is the difference between approaching, say, a portrait of someone, as you did with Ramin, um, and trying to capture some history that happened in a landscape that's just fairly empty. You know, there's nothing there anymore. Can, can you start a little bit talking about like the decision to film Ramin and tell his story? Um, the R Ramin, I, was, I, was also, I always was really fascinating, fascin fascinated uh, by this, the, mm, the thought that, uh, the every person carries with himself or herself a vast uh, history, a beautiful world, uh, immense world that you can dig in and then you discover. And if even if and this is this is absolute true because you just uh, uh, and I think this is the beauty of the documentary cinema. You just you can go in your own life and you. You look at your family history, and then you will discover all these the, the comedies and tragedies, dramas. Everything is there. So every person is 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 so interested that uh, I also I even had an idea just to go with the camera in the crowd, with the with the closed eyes, and uh, then suddenly open my eyes, and the, the the somebody who is in front of me, I just make a film about that that person and discover this the, this universe behind that that person mm -hmm. so the, the same happened with Ramin I didn't know it's uh, it's a long story I'm, I'm not going to much into the de details I was asked to make this film about about the Georgian wrestling and um, I just saw this strange guy sitting uh, at the table and I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to just to dive into the life of, 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 of this guy? And, uh, and then what I discovered that was absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. Because uh, w w it was the story about the wrestler, and we, we thought we are going to make a film about the wrestler who is waiting for his last battle. But as he was 75 years old, it was so difficult to find the competitor for, 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 for him still standing on, on the feet and, and ready to, to compete. So we are waiting and waiting and waiting. And while waiting, I ask him, uh, why, actually, why are you alone? You are 75 years old. You don't have a wife, you don't have a girlfriend, nobody. Why, why there is no woman in, in your life? And he said, and actually he said, yeah, I, this is true. That's a good question. I never thought about that. He said, maybe that's time for me to that some woman would enter my life. 
Uh, and I said, but did you have a girlfriend? And he said, yes, I did. I have 50 years ago, I had a girlfriend. So I, thought, I said, why don't you find her? Because he even kept he, her dress. And then we went to this journey to, to look for, for the girlfriend. So you just little, you just dig a little bit and suddenly, suddenly it opens. Mm -hmm. the, the whole universe, all the space, all the love story, all the loneliness. So, so this is how, how it started with, uh, with Ramin. Mm -hmm. And then we went to this journey, which for me it was more than the, the, the journey. And this, it was more important uh, than to find the, the girlfriend, but to, to d record this, uh, the, the journey of the loneliness, mm -hmm. the journey that uh, this hope that will probably will never come true. Mm -hmm. And it was like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it is very, of course, it's very complex. I, at a certain moment, I even thought, should I actually, sh I do, do I, as a documentary filmmaker, don't I disturb the, the, the reality? Um, what if, what happens if he will find the, the, his girlfriend, this old lady? Maybe his dream will be totally destroyed. Mm. Mm -hmm. And happily, he, he never found uh, <laughs> happily the, he the, never found the girlfriend. Yeah. Because uh, then we were talking with him. He said, I asked him, you know, I, he had the picture. He was 25 and the girlfriend was like 30 years old. And it was 50 years ago. And I asked him, and it was uh, Sveta Turmanidze, that's the name of the girlfriend. I asked him, how old do you think the, your, the girlfriend is now? And he, he thought about a little bit. I said, she said, she said maybe she is 50. <laughs> no, maybe 60. <laughs> 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 and and uh, because in his Im imagination, she's uh, still a young woman, yeah. young, beautiful woman. She, she couldn't uh, take just uh, let this thought that she's an 80 years old lady. Mm -hmm. So I, th I thought this, the dream of this woman of her life is more important than the real, real Sveta Turmanitsa. Mm. Let's, let's meet Ramin. We, we have a short clip to show you um, uh, from this film. Um, and there's a, a scene in it that, that we've, you and I have talked about that I want to talk about um, once you see the clip. So. Thank you. 
So you're talking about this, this idea of, of closing your eyes and having your next protagonist appear. And, and there's a wonderful moment in here where he's still alone, he's still sort of in his 360 world and the camera's filming him, the main protagonist. And then this other man <laughs> walks into the frame, you know, as you with the same bag, the same, you know, and there's kind of almost like a Marx Brothers moment going on where he's looking at Ramin, looking at the camera, like trying to figure out what is so special about this man who is just another traveler, uh, just another citizen with the same bag that he has. And his sort of, you know, circumambulation around, um, you know, you can see sort of his mind trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and I think it's a really wonderful scene because you had your frame and you let whatever happened happen within that frame and, and kept that in the final cut. What about that appealed to you so much? Besides its, besides its humor, what about it appealed to you so much that you would that you would keep that in the in the final cut? The, uh, the first of all, it's uh, the the film was shot by um, absolutely uh, great uh, DOP, Audrus um, Kemegis. Uh, I worked with him for thirteen years. Uh, and uh, he pa he passed away this this year, uh, and I learned a lot from him. And one of the things that actually I learned from him, he has this very sp very sp sp special way of filming, and uh, this very special way of dealing with time. Mm -hmm. He said uh, once he said uh, that if you if you just keep the camera that long, then it's a normal shot. And that's OK. And this, th then you, th you can um, use it, and it's a nice, and it's, uh, it, it could be nice. But if you are keeping it a little bit longer, mm -hmm. then it's, it's too long. And then it becomes boring, and, uh, and you really want to cut the camera, you switch off the camera. But if and then, but then, then you have this really temptation to, to 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 stop the camera. But if you overcome this and you're still keeping the camera longer than than the normal, and suddenly s suddenly reality opens, and s and and this is the moment that something happens. And, we, and, you, and if you have this patience to look longer than the normal. Mm -hmm. So this is what happened there in this in this scene. We just it it seems that nothing is happening. She, he's just standing with his back, and suddenly this guy comes. And uh, even now, then I then I watch this. I think, oh my God, why why did I follow him? It would be so interesting actually to 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 find out his story. <laughs> and, and I'm sure I, I it would be so nice to make a film about him. And just maybe leave the Ramin and go <laughs> and follow him and make another film. Uh, why, where he's coming from? What is in his back? What he's waiting for? So all this kind of this is a, I don't know. It's a web of 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 people and uh, relationships and uh, different stories that are just hanging in the air. And the all the e it's and this is real people. It's not invented. They are bringing their own uh, dramas mm -hmm. in this, and mm -hmm. it's and that's 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 the beauty in in the documentary film that you can you can explore this and uh, and then you, then you 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 see this and you th you think how many untold stories are just going passing by and and they they. Most probably, will probably will nobody will make film about this guy with right. the another guy with the with the back, and this will be gone forever. And and then you just think, okay, this could maybe that would be a a brilliant, beautiful film, and it just uh, goes away mm. with leaves with with this with this person, and will never be made. Mm -hmm. And this is a loss, I think. And of course, you cannot do everything, but uh, but this. 
this feeling of uh, of something that you you this lost opportunities to tell the stories that maybe that's that's that is the reason that keeps you in the documentary cinema. Mm -hmm. I was so many I was asked for so many times, okay, you made these documentary films, when are you going to make a real film? Really? Yeah. Yeah. But as if you haven't made real films? No, it's a documentary. But wha wha when, uh, what, uh, what, when are you going to make a real film, a fiction? Hmm. But um, no, I, it, this, these untold stories, they are really keeping me in the documentary cinema. Mm -hmm. I, I really want to make them. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's move to another film that you made um, just a couple years after Ramin um, in, in 2013 called Sanotaf which is a very mysterious film, but it's about something very specific. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about documentary dramaturgy um, and your process in how you might think about that dramaturgy while you're filming, if you even do, um, and how that manifests through the making of the project. Because as we're talking about, you know, your you're a director who's also working with um, a crew that understands that ability to be open and that you have a story that you're following or a story you want to tell, but, you know, and, and so the way Cenotaph is put together is rather elliptical. There are these huge, you show us very specific things, some conversation, and then something from nature. I mean, as we saw in Ramin, there is this juxtaposition, this balance constantly between landscape, the nature in that landscape, the human being in that landscape. And they all sort of dovetail. You know, you, you, I, I think maybe you spend a lot of time calibrating, you know, the, the weight of how important the natural world is, sometimes as metaphor for the human world and vice versa. Um, and in this scene, um, you know, it's, can you talk a little bit, can you foreground it a little bit about that historical moment and that, that you know, it, something happens in, in a certain place and there's a story that trickles down that goes along with it. Um, and a few people who are interested in solving the mystery that surrounds that story. How did you first learn about it? Uh, the, the film Cenotaph is, is based on a, on, on a very simple idea. I was asked, uh, I knew this, the old guy who was living in the countryside, and he said that his father, uh, during the war, he buried uh, one German soldier and two Russian soldiers. At the beginning of the war, it was a German soldier uh, and no, where no. where are we? In it's in the middle of Lithuania. It's so uh, in, in the, the just the countryside. Nowhere. Yeah. So at the beginning of the war, it was the Russian soldiers because the Russians were retreating, and at the end of the war, that was a German officer um, again. So and he was afraid. The father of this of this man, he was afraid of both the Germans and and Russians. So he secretly buried somewhere outside of the village in the, in nowhere. Uh, these three soldiers, and uh, he, he planted an oak, a little oak, just to remember the place. Mm -hmm. And then of, uh, he kept the secret for so many years, and he, then he died. He never said to nobody where actually the grave is. And the, this, um, my, the, 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 the protagonist of my film, who found me and said, I, I cannot live with this. These people, these are people. I, I, they cannot be buried just in the in the field like animals they should be uh, properly buried i cannot uh, cannot uh, sleep uh, until i will not bury them properly as a human beings mm. and for me it was so much more important not the fact not the action itself not the not this uh, task to bury these people but uh, i was really surprised by this wish of this man of this the, the Russians, they were occupants. The, the Nazis, they were occupants too. So they were enemies. All these three soldiers, they were enemies. Why somebody will really care about somebody who went to their country to with uh, and occupied and, and killed so many people? Mm -hmm. but, 
but this humanity, what really triggered me. And then this is how I st it started. We started to, to look for these bones. But um, again, uh, suddenly, and we, were, uh, we, we couldn't find these. We, we digged and dig and dig. And then I, I thought, maybe this is the, the, the right thing. Maybe this is the, what, what is happening. This is the most, more important than the finding these, these bones. Maybe, maybe the nature took these soldiers. Maybe these soldiers, they became the grass and the, the tree and the leaves and the bugs and the worms. So they, they became, they, all these people they became part of the nature. Mm -hmm. So how should I, maybe I would, I need to, to, f to film them through the nature, through the landscape, through the, through the oak and, and grass and leaves. Mm -hmm. uh, at a certain moment, I thought this is my, I'm doomed not to find. The Ramin didn't find the Sveta Turmanidze. I, another film, I was looking for the bell that sang yes. in the, in the lake. Found that. I never found the, the bell. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay, I probably I will, I will never find these, these soldiers. And maybe that's right. Maybe this is, this is what I have to do to make. Maybe this is more important to, to, to film what, what happened with them, how they became one with the nature mm. and not the fact itself that, okay, we found the bones and we buried them. Mm -hmm. we, we have a clip from, from Cenotaph. It's, it's about five minutes. It's, it's quite a long clip, but um, I think you'll enjoy it. And um, then I'd like to talk about this, yeah. this scene at the end also. Umwertungsunterlagen, die Sie uns zur Verfügung gestellt haben, das war doch ein bisschen zu wenig. Da war ja, so gut wie gar nichts. nichts. Ja, ja. Es ist ja wohl nichts gefunden worden, mhm. laut den Unterlagen. Wir haben eigentlich nur das geschätzte Alter. Da haben wir aber auch zwei, unter da haben wir ja. aber zwei unterschiedliche mhm. äh, Ausgaben, zehn Jahre ja. Unterschiede. Das finde ich ist ein bisschen heftig, ne? Ja. Das, äh, 
Aber darüber hinaus haben wir äh, gar nichts. Wir haben keine Erkennungsmarke, sodass wir äh, keinen Truppenteil haben, wo wir äh, den Ursprung der Marke rauskriegen können, ja, dass ja, wir genau ja. wissen, äh, wie wir da weiter verfahren. Ne? Das ist einfach zu wenig. Und dafür, dass wir wenig haben, sind denn die Widersprüche ja, ja. Denn noch doppelt, oder die liegen ja doppelt schwerer als, als sonst. Ja. Wenn wir eine Identifizierung Hilfen hätten, dann wäre das ja nicht das Problem, aber da wir nun keine Grundlagen Richtig. Entschuldigung, zur Identifizierung haben, sind ja so eine Widersprüche noch erschwerend. Ganz genau, aber wir sollten wirklich noch mal in die Staatskarten reinschauen und natürlich auch äh, in die Gräberkartei, weil wir anhand dieser Gräberkartei eben halt rausbekommen können, welche, Hallo. Hallo. welche Truppenteile dort eingesetzt gewesen sind und vielleicht haben wir irgendwie gleichzeitig Gefallene, die dort bestattet worden sind. Vielleicht auch sogar an dem Tag, in dem Todeszeitraum. Ne? Ja. Das Deswegen ist berühmte Stecknadel im Heuhaufen. Deswegen also, wie gesagt, also schauen wir einfach nochmal nach äh, in, den, äh, in, der, in die Gräberkartei, damit wir dort einfach sicher gehen können, dass wir das auch nicht ausgelassen haben. Ja, ja, naja, alle Wege, stimmt, alle ja. Wege gehen. Negatives Ergebnis ist auch ein Ergebnis, auch wenn es uns nicht gefällt. Aber so, das scheint mir doch ein bisschen zu fraglich zu sein, das Ganze. Im Endeffekt ja, aber wir lassen eben nichts, Überlegen Sie lassen eben nichts, nichts unversucht. Genau. Richtig. Ja. Hallo. Hallo. So this, this rabbit warren of an archive is kind of like the, the flip side or the other world, right, of being lost in the weeds and the, you know, nature covers over, yes. archive records and then files, but yet still that it's still a hidden life in a, in, in a nowhere place, if you will. Um, archives being a repository of some sort, but this language you use, this visual language you use following these guys through there is, is quite brilliant and quite a beautiful juxtaposition um, to, to this, this search that turns out to be not very fruitful. Um, can you talk a little bit about choosing the, the way you shot the scene um, because the, again, the language here is, is telling us a lot more than what the, these guys are talking about, very almost mundane things in a way, the procedural of how they might identify a body. Yes, it's, um, again, I have to refer to, to my cameraman. It's, it's filmed by, by Odris Kamejis, by him. And, uh, mm, it's, uh, as, as you see, it, it is much more important not, not what, they, what they say. Because it's a kind of casual conversation. It's not much information you get from this. But the, the landscape, the, this, the, you know, this endless shelves of files. And you understand, or I, I guess you understand, that every paper is a soldier. Mm -hmm. it, it is... A, files of these dead soldiers, they are passing by. So uh, I think this speaks more than, than actual information. And this is what, what we learned and we, uh, we always paid attention to, to this. I remember, <coughs> again, if speaking about the, the, the bell, mm, uh, we had to film in, uh, in the depth of really uh, 50 meters and it's uh, unapproachable death for amateurs. Mm -hmm. Only professionals can dive that, uh, that deep. So uh, my cameraman, he couldn't go so, so deep, so uh, we hired the, the crew of uh, divers who are not uh, filmmakers. And I, I remember I observed this scene, then, mm, then my cameraman, Audrius, he taught uh, this unprofessional divers how to film. And he, he made the crash course in half an hour. And after half an hour, 
actually he, they were already a, a DOPs, I would say. <laughs> they were so good. They went down and uh, and from the first shot they did very. And so I don't remember all the details what what he told him what to do, but I I remember what he he how what what he said and i think this is important and this i used in in uh, as a method in the, in many of my films they showed the footage that they that they filmed by themselves and usually it's under the water and there's uh, many interesting things there some strange construction some some strange mysterious objects but what they did they used to film that's that's the object so they used to film like like this and then you see, okay, interesting. And then another object. And then another object. And then at the end, you, you see it and you say, okay, yeah, nice, interesting, but what? Why should I see it? So what my cameraman, what I would just taught them, he said, if you want the audience to see this thing, you, you don't go like this. You just pass by. And then you, your audience will have this pleasure to discover this by themselves. They will say, oh, they didn't notice this. Look, that's such a beautiful world, but they have, they, they're going there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's also a promise because, okay, this is beautiful, but if they're going further, maybe something even more beautiful is uh, waiting um, in this dark, uh, dark, dark space they are going. So this kind of uh, speaking, uh, filming something, not, not going straight to, to the object, but going next to the object and object and, and letting, uh, giving opportunity for the audience to discover for themselves. To if you you make uh, you make uh, the, the film about the, the the bones, about this this the remains of these soldiers, but while you're making this film, you discover something mo much more important. Mm. Then you're making of again. I'm 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 coming back to this uh, the bell. You are making a film about the the bell, but uh, and you really put. It seem, seems on the first layer, it seems you put all your efforts to find this, this, this bell. But at the end, uh, you discover something more important. And, uh, and even me, I, I also discovered uh, for myself that, let's say, that this paradox, par paradoxical thought that the memory of the bell is more important than the actual bell. Because the bell maybe he exists, maybe not. But the moment that then the, this mysterious bell that sang 300 years ago, the moment he will be forgotten by everybody, it will disappear. It will be it. it Just will be another gone. thing that was yeah yeah. It will be gone because if nobody remembers him, mm -hmm. this bell it 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 does doesn't totally exist. Mm -hmm. So this kind of the the importance of the memory and the importance to remember. So you do about about the bell, but uh, but at in the reality you get something something else. Mm -hmm. You make about you make a film about Ramin or about any person, but while making this, it's not a portrait. It's you you make you discover something something that wha what is next to mm -hmm. that person. Something wha what is more important than just the the person with the, his interesting story or interesting biography or or interesting way of living something else yeah so this kind of shifted focus i think this is uh, i i always was looking for that i mm. always I, I thought it's not it's important not to show like this this television can do this but go somewhere Next to the object, and try to find something. What what is what is more important? Mm. This is this is a nice segue, actually, to to bridges of time, because here we could look at it as a multi-portrait portrait. Um, these were your mentors and teachers. 
filmmakers who are working in a certain period of time, a very restrictive time in Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, um, and making beautiful poetic work that spoke, that was quite polemical in a sense. Um, but the film language they were using was so revolutionary for the time. Um, can you talk a little bit about this through line, um, particularly in Lithuania and the surrounding areas of this legacy? Um, and, and we'll get into their, their stories in a minute, but you have this group of men and then there's your generation of makers and you're a teacher now teaching young film students, um, and the way in which that place and time and the person you are, how much that informs the way you see the world, and, and how much filmmakers, how it's imperative, maybe not in every case, but in most cases, even if filmmakers never leave their place of origin, to have this expansive view on the human experience. Um, can you talk a little bit about the way you entered this project? Um, you co-directed it with Christina Brieda. Um, and you told me you were supposed to be one of the protagonists, but you ended up co-directing. Um, so can you just give a little back background on the film and, and how, in, I mean, these men are all quite old now, so of course time was of the essence again to film them while they were still alive. Um, can you t tell us a little bit about that process? Yes, that uh, this this film was. Uh, <coughs> I was invited. I, I met Kristina Briede, the Latvian filmmaker. Uh, she invited me uh, to this project first, as as you said, as a protagonist. But little by little, we started to speak. We shared our experiences, and uh, and um, I. Little by little, get more involved not as a as a protagonist, but as a as a film 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 director, a co-director of of this film. And for me, this was very personal film. And it started to be very personal because all these I met all these uh, old masters, and I for me it was I learned a lot uh, a lot from from them. And for me to and maybe and sometimes the making a documentary film is the probably the only way to understand them and it's because you really have to look really closely to their creative work you mm -hmm. need to th this really pres really very close look to this and you you to, to to be able to make the film you need to understand or to feel or one of the methods of was that we went to the spaces of the, where the film was, all these films were filmed. Again, to be there, to to, sta to, 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 to stand in the place where they, they used to put their tripods, just to see the landscapes and to understand why they, they chose these landscapes. What fascinated them? What was, what, what was the secret? And little by little, uh, we started to understand that this the very special relationship with the with the nature mm -hmm. and with with the image they mm, they it's something uh, you know you need to understand the the specificity of the documentary cinema in the, at the soviet time the, where everything is under really hard censorship so uh you can, uh, uh, but the censors, they can censor the, the subject, they can censor the, the characters. Of course, they can censor words. What you can say or you, what you, can, you should cut out or what you cannot say. But you cannot censor the landscapes. And then suddenly the landscapes start to speak. Mm -hmm. And how can you, how can you censor? What can you, how can you do this? How can you censor something visual or landscape, how can you sense the, the time then the, the, the space? And then you look closely, then you see how what what the stories they this landscape they are they're speaking. This untouched uh, the landscapes that are untouched by uh, by the Soviet regime. The not not destroyed, not to, to the deformed by by the Soviet system. The landscapes that are keeping the signs of 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 eternity, 
and um, it's again it's it's then it, it becoming the, the this sacred and sac sacrality in in these landscapes so this this what what we were started to 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 look in this in these films and uh, and again uh, we we thought that it's 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 more important to to show this and to 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 let the audience to feel um, this the uh, the essence of of their filmmaking this the the beauty of this landscape mm -hmm. then then to actually to explain the the circumstances the 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 context the method yeah it works very beautifully because they they are still so radical and so poetic in their thinking as well. Um, and there's a, v a, a favorite scene of yours, I think, in this film with, with Uldis Browns. Yeah. And you, you bookend the film with him. We see him in the very beginning, sort of almost like a little boy, like digging around in his room and the way you have him framed. He's quite small in the frame with all of his stuff, you know, just endless amounts of stuff around him. But then at the end of the film, you put in this beautiful segment where he's telling you about a dream. Um, and, and I'd like to play that film now so we can see a little bit of, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the I clip just, rather. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just, uh, it, it, that's also as an introduction to, to, to this. What I, I was really moved by in this, in this scene, he, he decided to, to, to tell us. We didn't ask about his dreams. He, he just, out of uh, not this, suddenly he just decided to tell us this dream. And uh, he was telling the dream how he was, how he died. And what, and but, and he, while telling this dream, he started to cry. And he cried not because of the fact that he died he was cranked out of the beauty. He said it was so incredibly beautiful that he couldn't take it. He, he started to cry. I think this is this is a real filmmaker. He, even in the in the moment of his death, he 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 just sees this beauty, mm. uh, the absolute beauty. Mm. Es esmu nomīris pat, es pār beigts, bet atkal atmodies. Man bija tāds gadījums, ka es redzēju tādu skaistu sapni, ka tādā mūzīgā angārā ir nolikts tāds kaut kāds tāds šķērsums, maizes klaipa formā, ja? No akmens, bet tas ir no tāds drusk lielāks nekā visu šī istabiņa, jā. Tā, 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 un pilnīgi nopulēts tīrs. Un man par to ir jātiek kā alpīnistam <laughs> uz tā, tā klaipīt kā virspusē. Un tur ir tikai tāda maza, tāda, tāda iedobīta, kur it kā varētu kaut kā kāinu uzlikt un ar kedām uzrāpties. Un es rāpjos, rāpjos, un man ir meiteni, pasniedz rociņi, un palīdz uzraudies augšā. Skaista meiča, ne man tas tik šausmīgi aizskatināja, ka mēs aizmīdzis rauzā. Skaists
to a person in this film, each one you speak with, and, and in homage to the title of the film, these, these bridges of time, and the way in which, particularly I think, in nonfiction filmmaking, in documentary, there's so many ways to enter and visualize memory, which is distinctly unreliable, uh, personal, totally subjective. Um, and you are often dealing with this elevated way in which we inhabit our imaginations and our memories and the way our thought processes work, which are always very disjointed. And when you storytell, in a sense, and what I see also even in these, in these older films, is, is again these spaces that exist between points in time. Um, so there's this elliptical way you storytell. It's like this and then dot, dot, dot. And you can jump in time and space so many people are actually reticent to tell to story tell that way. I mean, documentary is often filled with so much explication just in case, <laughs> you know, people don't get it. There's this sort of almost disdain in a way for the spectator not to be able to make the leaps that the director wants, but more importantly, to deny us the leaps we can make in our own minds as we're watching a film. And, and you speak beautifully to this because it, it exists in all of your work. Um, so I'm just, uh, I'd like to hear more about, you know, this, this way in which you craft story um, and, and why you know that's so important to you um, to, to storytell in this way. I I always, we, we, sp we speak a lot, uh, a lot about the freedom of, of the director uh, to, to, to make films the way uh, he makes, but also we, we do not speak about the freedom of the audience to, 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 to understand uh, films the way they want to understand. I think, and this is a very important thing. In directors, they are not making films for themselves. They are making for, for the people, and they should leave that, that freedom for, for the audience. I think this is a question of of respect, and this is very important uh, uh, question for me. If then, if because I, I always believe that the documentary cinema is a conversation, and if you you cannot make this conversation if you, if you if you think that the somebody you speak uh, is is a stupid mm. or not be able to understand what what you say. And then you then then you start to speak with with that person as with the, like with a little child trying to explain everything, and I think this is a total disrespect. And also then you just uh, chew and then explain everything. Or the same thing is th then then you then you act uh, like um, like like a god, and you just uh, saying. Oh, I, now I will tell you the the true that I know, and and you just just listen. But also the all the opposite uh, case. Then uh, suddenly you said, "I am a humble servant of you. I will in entertain you. I will uh, I will do whatever I can just to to keep you entertained this 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 uh, hour or, or an hour and a half. Please buy the ticket, and you will never regret." So I, 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 again, I think this is disrespect. It's a not an equal c conversation. So I really believe that uh, the only way in the documentary cinema, the only way to speak is as with somebody who is equal, with 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 you at the same at the same level, and then you speak with somebody like this. You don't need to explain. Sometimes you say half a word or half a sentence and. And the person continues. I think this is the the best conversation. Then, then you you how to say you you then it's complementary. You add to to, to each other. You uh, you then the you let 
this to give a chance for the audience to to involve their ex experience, life experience. Maybe sometimes you just need to to to, to trigger something, and it right. it it arises, and then and then people putting their own. Uh, emotions, their their own experience, their own uh, their own well, the the view of uh, on, on life, and then it's then it's so so much much more interesting mm -hmm. than because I don't believe I don't think we we need more facts. Sometimes it it sometimes it could sound uh, a, a little bit drastic. I, I tell to, to, to my students, and they say, I would like to make uh, a film about this amazing writer. But why? Why, why, should, why? why do I need to know more about this amazing writer? There are so many amazing writers all around, or painters, or writers, or actors. Why, why, I, why, why another film about that? The film, the only way, the only possible, the, the only way is to make film if, if this film is not about the writer, mm. if the film is about me. Mm. Then I want to see that film because it speaks about me. So it's a strange paradox. You, you make, and actually, then you make the film, maybe the character is the, 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 the great uh, documentary filmmaker. But in reality, you make something about what is really is there for you. Mm -hmm. So you make a film about yourself. And if somebody in the audience uh, about your your relationship with the, with the time, about your 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 loneliness, about your uh, your feeling of distemporality, of the, the your, your own feeling of, of beauty of life, about your your something that is really personal for you, and some maybe somebody in the audience they they watch this and and if they will think oh my god this is about me this is how i feel this is what i this is my fears this is my joy this is my uh, what i feel and then you reach this the, the 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 goal of the documentary film and then it's not so important uh, maybe then then it's it's maybe you just use the the character of your film just to trigger something that is personal in the in the audience, mm -hmm. maybe th I don't know. Maybe th it's a cruel way to to put like uh, like like this that you're using your characters, but uh, I think this is much more important than than all the amount of information that you can give. And then uh, and, and we don't need more information. I think the, the we need uh, more time to. Sp to think about ourselves and what what we're doing, what we we do in this world, mm -hmm. why we live, how we feel, uh, where we look for the for the light in the darkness that uh, we we all experience at at certain moment of our life or in the moments of our lives, and that it's much more important than all the information in the world. I think it's interesting because I. I I remember, I, I can think of several instances in the film where these directors, these people who are being profiled, uh, respect that as well and, and feel the same way. I mean, the way that they're shot, even in the landscape, a lot of times we barely see their face. We, you know, when they do, they do speak to this, these very same themes. Um, you know, decades on the same preoccupations, the same obsessions, the same, you know, questions and, and you know, openness to whatever information is going to come their way um, is, is still beautiful to see. And, and most of them actually are lonely and alone. And, you know, this is, uh, it's just a very moving film. I, I encourage you, all of, all of you, to go see it. It's, it's quite beautiful. Um, I... This went very quickly. We're actually out of time. Um, so I thank you very much um, for your presence here with us today. And I thank you all for coming. <laughs> that went fast. <laughs> <laughs>